Every girl has a half slip included in her wardrobe, and a half slip is very easy to make. Depending on individual size, it takes less than a yard of fabric, about 24 inches of elastic, and to add a touch of finery around the bottom, less than a yard of lace. But there's more to sewing than fabric and thread, elastic and lace. How it is finished makes the difference. Straight seams are essential. It takes skill and attention to detail to make the half slip hold snugly around the waist. That touch of finery at the bottom will remain your own special secret of perfection. Notice how the pieces must be stitched together. The slip must be well balanced. You can make the slip in any color of the high fashion rainbow and in any design. Keep in mind that a good fit guarantees success. Select the material, its texture and the color of your choice. Make sure the material is grain perfect. When applying measurements to material for the first time, the instructor will explain how the hip measurements are taken and why extra material is required. It is essential to write down measurements. Do not trust to memory. One way to mark and measure the material is to use a tape measure and yardstick. Make the measurements carefully to ensure a good cut. Use the same procedure for both sides. There are a number of methods of marking and measuring material. Remember to leave enough extra material for comfort and seams. When markings are completed, the material must be snipped and torn or cut with scissors. Cut with long, even strokes and straight along the marked lines. If the scissors are sharp and well kept, cutting will be easy and accurate. Always make sure that there are no extra pieces of cloth under the material being cut. Proceed very carefully. Remove the piece of cloth and place it over the other, making sure that the corners match and the edges are straight. Now bring out the box of pins and pin the pieces with the right sides together. With the two pieces of fabric properly pinned, select the stitch to be used and bring the cloth in line. Reverse the first few stitches. This will strengthen the beginning of the stitch. The line of stitching and the edge of the material must be parallel. Remember the machine does not guide the material. The hands do this. So try to keep both on the fabric when possible. 
At the end of the line, reverse the stitch again, then cut off the excess thread. Place the fabric on the ironing board and remove the pins, always returning them to the pin box. Now use the pinking shears to trim off the edges of the fabric. This prevents the material from raveling. Trim off as little as possible. Both sides must be done in this way. First, remove the pins. Then trim off the edge. Just as with the ordinary scissors, use long, firm strokes and cut in a straight line. Now set the work on the ironing board. Open the edges of material so that both pieces fold at the stitch. Using a steam iron, apply pressure to the open edges in quick little up and down motions. After pressing, the edges lie flat against the fabric. Material is pressed to safeguard it before cutting and stitching take place, so that there's no chance of it being stretched. Material is ironed when a definite crease is required. To fold the waist of the slip before pinning, it must be ironed, because it's a very small area to fold. Now it can be folded and held easily in place. Assemble and pins must be close at hand, and a ruler or cardboard strip must be used to measure correctly the width of the fold. Watch for puckering and straighten the fold if it buckles. After pinning, always put everything back in place and close the pin box. With the waist properly pinned, it can now be stitched. Stitch along the lower edge of the fold. When sewing around a complete circle, always stop well away from the next turn so that the material underneath is not stitched. Keep hands safely away from the working needle. Reverse the stitch at the end of the line and leave a little opening to insert the elastic. Always snip off any extra loose thread when stitching is complete. Keep the work neat at all times. A safety pin will help to insert the elastic. Put it through the opening and work it through. Push the material over the pin, then hold the pin and straighten the fabric. The ends of the elastic are joined to complete the waistband. The waist of the slip is now complete, and there's now only the hem to make. The pinking shears are used to put an edge on the hem. Cut both the back and the front at the same time, but keep checking that they match at the edges.
bags of lace will add a touch of finery to the hem. To measure the length required, match the front of the slip with one length of lace. Now double the length of lace. With scissors, cut it straight across. The lace can be a bit too long, but it must never be too short. Turn the slip right side out to prepare for sewing. This part of the work is the most enjoyable as you reach the completion of the slip. The lace must be basted onto the slip with a piece of contrasting thread so the work of sewing is made easier. Join the lace with perfection. It is the end of the work. Here, above all other places, be sure and cut off the extra thread. A hanging thread is a sign of imperfection. 